confidentiality, okay? What is confidentiality in our terms, anybody? Keep your mouth shut. Keep your mouth shut. Okay. Now, I'm going to get in just a little bit deeper, okay? Got into it a little bit last year, but just so you know. Confidentiality is protection, okay? You have access to things that other people out there in the community don't have. Names, phone numbers, addresses, disabilities, okay? All of that stuff is protected, okay, so that a child cannot be identified, okay? So it's uh, personally identifiable data, information, data would be name, uh, number, phone numbers, uh, grades, uh, driver's license number, social security maybe, possibly, I don't know if we, we kind of ruled some of that stuff out, but information, disabilities, uh, you know, what kind of, uh, what are they allergic to, are they taking any medicine, uh, do they have uh, some kind of disease, uh, records, uh, attendance records are, are confidential. Uh, grades are confidential. Write-ups are confidential. Behavior reports. Okay, those are all things that we ask you or we ask the parents to disclose to us while we're educating them. All that stuff we're asking, and the parents are they have to give us that stuff. So when they give it to us, it's our responsibility as a district, as employees. To be confidential about it and not give that stuff out. Confidentiality also uh, applies to discussions about students and the students' records. Now, this is probably, now you can get trouble on the first part, but this is probably the part that you can get in the most trouble on is discussing. Okay? So let's, let's just, we've been talking a lot about disabilities. Okay, students with IEPs. Um, if you're talking about a student's behavior and it can be identified, okay? Now, when I'm talking to you all in here in this training, I'm not breaking confidentiality because I'm not saying their names. Uh, it's for training purposes. But if I get out and we're talking about, if Lynn gets out and he's talking to Larry about a student on his bus that talks with a lisp or that has a, a limp, <laughs> okay. That guy that come in here today in that wheelchair, Larry, God, he's killing me in the, on the bus yesterday. He, he's supposed to be on the bus in a wheelchair. He gets on there anyway. He's acting up. Can I identify who that is? Yeah. Ronnie, can you identify who I'm talking about? Yeah. How to get you in trouble. That's a, that's a simple explanation, but if you're talking... Uh, to somebody about a child or a situation or a behavior that that has nothing to do, the other person has nothing to do with that child, doesn't haul them or anything, you're in trouble. You broke confidentiality. It's your responsibility to take care of those kids. Let's use this for an example. Let's say I have a student on my bus that has ADHD and I'm talking to them about the Not get mine under control. Is okay. It? Okay. Good question. I don't know if y'all heard that or not, but question is: um, driver has a student with ADHD on the bus. Can they talk to an experienced driver about uh, how to handle a student with ADHD? Yes, you can do that. Why? Because you're not saying Jimmy is killing me. He's got ADHD. He takes Ritalin, Concerta, Valium. Um, <laughs> Alcohol, said it, Benadryl, okay, over the counter, okay. But why am I wrong? Because I said what? Jimmy, okay. So you can do that. Um, long as you're not discussing names, I've got a student that has ADHD. He's up in the seat, he's moving around. Um, you don't even have to say he, okay. Uh, here's what. Here's what I'm talking about. Okay, I'm in a checkout line at Walmart, and I run into run into Larry. Okay, he's behind me. I'm checking out. Hey, man, how's it going? Man, that, that boy on the bus that that is in, broke his leg. He's got or broke his arm. He's in a cast. Uh, yesterday, he killed me. I'm so glad it's Friday. Uh, I don't have to deal with him for two days. Uh, 
But man, you won't know what he said. Just he said that Jamie uh, got on Facebook the night before and and said that she was going to whip Johnny on my bus. Can you believe that? And, yeah. And, and you know that's where you get yourself in trouble. <clears throat> or if you're out complaining. Or okay, here's here's this is probably got perfect. Let me think of one. If you go to church with somebody that their kids or their grand, let me say this. All right, so you go to church. You've been going to church with uh, your best buddy since grade school, okay? And you're a bus driver. You're sitting there. And you, <laughs> I'm trying not to get too close to them because this happens all the time. Uh, at church in the grocery store, um, it, it can happen to us all and it's easy to do. So if you're talking to your best buddy in church about some kids, okay, that are acting up on your bus, you said the name, you said what they're doing, and somebody next to you hears that, or it's one of the little girl's friends and she's been complaining about you, but your buddy didn't want to say nothing to you because you all been friends since she was in kindergarten. Okay? But then she talks about that and then your buddy goes back and says something to their parents. Well, she was talking about that. You're trouble. I hope that made sense. Okay? But that's how it happens. And we've had to deal with that the last two years since I've been here. We've had to deal with the confidentiality uh, uh, break because of that. Um, the best policy is to not say anything about your kids on the bus. If you're talking to anybody about the kid, or if you need to talk to anybody about your kids on the bus and their behavior, um, talk to one of us here at the garage. Okay? I'm talking about me, Marshall, Rob, Victoria, you know, whoever we need to do to take care of that. Uh, but I, I know you get in the lounge, you want to talk about what's, and it's good to vent. Okay? It's good to vent. Just don't vent with names, because that can get you in some trouble. Let me give you some more examples. I know I've got off on a tangent here. What laws protect it? FERPA. It's Family Education Rights and Privacy Act. Okay, that's the law. That's why it's protected. It has Kentucky KARs, Idea of Individuals with Disability Act. Okay, all of these are laws, and and, and that, that protect it. Five hundred fours. Still the file for fair. All their information is protected. What 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 are some of these? Okay. Personal and family data. Um, you know who their mom and daddies are, where they live. Okay. Uh, is it their stepdad or stepmom? It's all protected. Um, you don't have no business talking about that stuff to anybody else anyway. So don't do it. You get you in trouble. Can I interject a little bit? When I'm training confidentiality, for anybody here on these new ones, what do I tell you all? Just walk away from it. If you hear rumors, <coughs> you can stop it, walk away from it. Don't talk about it. Because then you're going to get in trouble. Yeah. Don't talk about any kids, just walk away. And that's what I tell everybody that I put this training That's right. Just don't do it. Um, evaluations and test data. What is that? I mean, you're not going to deal much with that, but. If, if you're in one of these meetings, okay, and we're doing a better job with this, okay, um, we're trying to get you guys, and especially Victoria, into these special ed meetings and 504 meetings. Uh, we do a very good job of it with, with all of our special needs drivers, okay? They're in these meetings. But if a student has a 504 or an IEP that deals with you, okay, with transportation, a medical issue or something like that, we're getting more involved in trying to get you guys in these meetings and sometimes they may give you one of their plans. Now, if you get one of those plans, you better make dang sure that you don't let that get out, because that will. I mean, that could have criminal attached to it if that plan gets out, okay? So, uh, but we're doing a better job of getting you all informed more and more about what's going on uh, with, your, with your kids that you're driving. So just be real careful with anything that identifies. Um, Progress reports, report cards, work samples, attendance records, written accounts, parent-teacher conferences. That'd be like for us, it'd be behavior. Uh, that stuff's confidential. Uh, conferences, audio and videotapes of your, the kids, electronic information stored on phones, PDAs, 
stuff like that is all confidential if it's talking about a kid and their name's involved, okay? I, you know, I hate to really wade out into high water on this, but I'm going to a little bit. And there's not a really great answer, um, but sometimes safety has to trump letting a kid's name out on the radio, okay? It, there's the only way we can do it. Okay, if you've got a kid, try not to give their last name unless we ask for it at dispatch. Try to get off and, and signal six somebody, call their cell phone. Okay, if you hear that on the radio, we're, we're trying to keep it confidential. If you hear signal six, can you give me a signal six? That means call us on the cell phone. Okay, because that, that don't tip everybody off out, out there to say, well, they want them to call, it must be confidential. So. Just remember that. If it's signal six, that means call us. Right? Call us. But sometimes we're going to ask, what was the name of that kid you're bringing back? You're not very confident you have it. We're doing this stuff for safety reasons, safety reasons and logistics, okay? Uh, if you can, hold off on giving out phone numbers on there. But if we ask for it, go ahead and give it. You're covered. Uh, while I'm at it, I know you're going to talk about this, Marshall. Keep your radio traffic to a minimum. Number two, please do this for me. If you don't do nothing else that I'm telling you today, please do this next year, okay, this coming year. Keep your radios turned on and turned up, please. That is a lifeline for us. We are helpless at dispatch when we can't get a hold of you guys. And there's no worse feeling. I mean, you think about it. When you can't get a hold of us, we're helpless. We've normally got somebody on the phone uh, worry about a kid or a discipline issue or a principal trying to find something. I'll give a good example. It's happened. We had a student that uh, had some family members in a car accident. We couldn't get a hold of the driver. We didn't need them to drop them off. Didn't need them to pick them up. But we couldn't get a hold. We finally did. But you talk about stressful trying to get a hold of those people and, and try not to let them kids get dropped off and find out that before Family got to them and told them, okay? So please, 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 when you do your pre-trip, you turn that bus on, make sure that you got your radio on and make sure it's turned up. Please, please. Sometimes a teacher or somebody come out and get a copy the radio. You turn it down? down. Turn it down to get turned down. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. And, 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 and that's the biggest mistake right there because... I know we we may not be able to fix that, but please try to do better with that. And we do a really good job. I'm not, you know, Fox 2019. You all do really do an excellent job though. That just you know that's one thing that that it's just you're helpless. I feel helpless when I can't get hold of you all. Uh, and I know you do too, does. I'm not I'm not jumping on to you or anything like that. Uh, all right, moving on. Biometrics, okay. That's how much they weigh, how tall they are, what kind of, uh, anything that identifies a student based on their physical characteristics. Blue eyes, long hair. You know that second grader has got the goat teeth? <laughs> That's it. That, that'll give their information away if you're talking about it. All right, what well, name, child, parent? I mean, I'm not going to read those. You know what they are? What are the Social Security? Uh, there they are. Characteristics. How do we ensure? All right, we do training. Okay, we do training. Everybody's trained on how to keep this that confidentiality. This is your training. Your own notes. You know, and here's the thing. Hey, Y'all do an excellent job with this too. I'm not, I'm not blowing you, blowing smoke. The students are at the stop sign. You don't, or stop. You don't have their card information on the card. You don't let them go. Okay. Those cards have that information on it. Protect those. If somebody's not on there, don't let them go. Okay, when you're writing kids up, this, we get this a lot. Don't put another student's name on, on the write-up. Okay, and now here's another one. Because we don't always see these. You're all going to have to do good with this on your own. Those warnings. I got my butt handed to me last year 
because one of you guys or gals, I don't know which one, I'm not going to tell you, confidential, put Jimmy's name, okay, did, did a write up. Uh, Jimmy was calling Jamie a butthole. <laughs> <laughs> and they sent that home to Jimmy's mommy. Jimmy's mommy called Jamie's mommy, and they just about had World War Three, And they called up there wanting to know, why were you telling my kid's name? That's on those write-ups, okay? You know the ones that were the new ones? We don't monitor those. You all give them, and Marshall, baby, come on, talk about it. Yeah, let, me, let me just say this. I'm, I'm, <laughs> you know. Huh? We're not sending them off. We let you This is confidential. Marshall can clean up my mistakes when he gets up here in a minute, okay? <laughs> but now, the, the write-up, the, uh, the warnings, they have what, three? Three. Okay, the warnings are the three. You know, you press hard, and then one goes to you, one goes to us, one goes to the parent, and one goes to the school. No, one, stays on the one stays on the bus. Okay. Do not, just make it specific to the kid that's getting a warning. Don't put who, what they're doing to somebody else. Be very careful of that. And if you got any questions about it, don't send it home until you let us look at it. We'll, we'll, we'll keep you in compliance. Johnny was calling somebody a buzzhole. Yeah, another student. another student. Yeah, I always use another student. Another elementary student. Okay, Or just use another student. That would just be more than Jim there. So please do that. I got my tail handed to me, my parent, because we messed that up. Do you, you remember that? I'm telling you what, she was ready to come to the garage on me. <laughs> uh, all right, so next. Okay, that's what we're talking about. Don't mention other students. Don't discuss it, anything about it, strategies or whatever. That, that, now, that would answer your question, okay, right there. You can discuss plans or strategies you have used with other students. Just don't use their names. How do we ensure that? We just we're, we're very careful with it. Okay, be confidential. This is more about school school storage. Just make sure your bus is secure. All right. This was a big one when I remember getting this. Okay, how are you going to know if you're going to send an email about somebody unless you say what their name is? I really struggled with this. And basically what they want you to do is just have meetings and talk face to face. They don't want you texting. They don't want you talking about it. Okay? But I'll tell I'll tell you one good on myself, okay? We're not nobody's perfect. Okay? They've not been but one perfect ever. This was a pretty big issue that I was dealing with at school. This was when I was a principal, okay? I sent an email. That was it was a pretty daggum hateful email, and I mean it was about some serious issues that I was dealing with with a child and a parent. I put the wrong email at the top and sent it. I never did hear anything back. And I was like, I, showed, I was like, I showed her how I did. I was, yes, I got her good. Well. The issue came straight back around. I had forgot about it, nothing else. I said, well, I'm going to show her again. I said, let's get a beat. Come on in. <laughs> I never got no email. I said, well, yes, you did. I see it right here. <laughs> click, click, click. Oh. <laughs> I, no, no, I, I didn't want to go to that. I'm telling on myself. So <laughs> I did. I printed the email out and showed her. I said, <laughs> I'm telling you all. <laughs> I printed it out. Had had the other email at the top. I said, I emailed you. Right there. 
She grabbed it. She said, I've never seen this. I thought, uh-huh, uh-huh. She said, that's not my email. <laughs> I said, oh my God. <laughs> sure did. Luckily, I didn't get sued. I didn't get to jail. <laughs> but I had to eat a whole lot of stinking crow, and it tastes like crap. <laughs> so, there you go. Be real careful. Um, yes. When I was a massage therapist, one of the things they taught us about confidentiality was if, let's say, you're in the grocery store and you see so and so kid's grandma. Do not walk up to grandma and say something to grandma about said kid because you don't know what's going on with their family situation. Grandma should, may not be privy to any yeah. information about you. That's a very good point. Grandmas are the best people in the world. Okay? But grandmas are the most dangerous. <laughs> when you're talking about confidentiality, there's nothing like those grandkids. Uh-huh. Can I hear you? <laughs> so I know my mother's born. And she's a she I have to calm her down. <laughs> so you want me to tell you what I do when I see them in, a, in the grocery store? If I'm going down this aisle, don't need no help. <laughs> oh God. I just avoid. I mean honestly. Or just be very cordial. Yeah, that's the thing that will get you in the most trouble. If you think that you're going to leverage granny, let me just tell you. Because this happens. If you think you can leverage grandmother to help you get their kids to discipline their kids, you're wrong. They'll turn on you. They'll bite you. So don't ever try to go to the grandparents over to the parents. They'll bite you. Yeah. Keep it all confidential. Now, if the granny has, if the grandmother has custody, yeah, that's fine. Uh, but that goes back to knowing your kids. Who's picking them up? Who's got them? Who's on your emergency cards? That's why those emergency cards are very important. We make sure we touch on that. All right. Any questions? I'm going to go on. I took a happy day here. Yeah, and don't give any information out over the phone. You all ask us, and I'll be the judge of this new break on confidentiality, okay? You can stand up back in there and say, that ain't right. You can't give it, because it says it right here, it doesn't. But when we're dealing with transport kids, okay, so let me be the judge of, if, if, I, if, if we ask for it over the radio, you know, I'll take responsibility for it, okay? Uh, but I, I know everybody's real careful about confidentiality, and that's a good thing. Okay, we're talking to a colleague about his student or his family apply these four questions to determine should you be talking about it. Number one. Why is it discussed? Are you just venting? If you're just venting to somebody else, don't do it. If it's not something to help improve uh, the situation, you shouldn't be talking about it. Don't be griping to one another about students on the bus. If they come back and say something, if I tell you something about another kid, and then you go tell somebody else, and he comes and tells me, who's in trouble? You. And they could be somebody listening. There's always ears. This is more school setting, too. I mean, we don't really deal with this, but if, if they're on the emergency card that they fill out, the parent signs it, they can pick them up. Or you, you can, that's all they really have access to do is pick them up. Okay? I would refrain from discussing any kind of behavior or anything in, a, in detail at the bus stop. Tell them to call us. Or, or tell them you'll call them when you get off the bus route, okay? This just goes to what we've talked about, directory information. 
That goes back. We don't even worry about that. That's the house. <coughs> okay, confidentiality requirements. Every example of Kentucky Public School District must adhere to the confidentiality protection of all students. All student information should be kept confidential unless disclosed. Uh, disclosure serves a professional purpose or is required by the law. Uh, if you've got a question about what to disclose, if somebody asks you about personal information, come see me. Just say, I, I, I'm not comfortable saying that. You'll have to give somebody else. That should, should be your best line. Okay, the students' confidentiality, confidentiality is the law and also is the right thing to do. Congratulations. Okay, this, this is the note. <coughs> get this out of the way. The, the Kentucky General Assembly, that's all, all the lawmakers up there, passed this new law this year, okay? Some of you may have heard about it, somebody not. <coughs> no smoking, uh, all smoking, vaping, dipping, okay, uh, has been prohibited on any school ground, school vehicle, or building, okay? In the back of the, I, I mean, I know some of you smoke and vape and do different things, but as long as the kids didn't see it, I, I wouldn't say nothing, okay? But, you know, with this law being passed, it's all over the district. The schools are getting trained in this same thing. Uh, we don't have a smoking section any longer at the, at the garage, okay? Um, we, we just don't do it. No smoking, I'm dipping on the buses. Uh, it's just against the law. Here, here's exactly what it says, and I'm going to read it to you because it's new. Tobacco, alternative nicotine products, or vapor products. The use of any tobacco product, alternative nicotine product, or vapor product as identified in KRS 438-305 is prohibited for all persons and at all times or in all property, including <coughs> any vehicle that is owned, operated, leased, or contracted for use by the board and while attending or participating in any school-related student trip or student activity <coughs> and is in the presence of a student or students. School employees shall enforce the policy. A person in violation of this policy shall be subject to discipline or penalties as set forth by the board. That's the board policy. <coughs> what does that mean? That means no, no nicotine, no smoking, no vaping on school grounds. No dipping. No dipping. No That's what I said. No dipping. I quit dipping. I don't dip. I've been quit since. Well, if he dipping, you can't swallow Well, <laughs> let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. That's what, that's what the law says. Okay. I've informed you what the law says. We will be taking down the smoking signs. I have to. If I don't, then I'm in violation of this policy. I'll be taking the, the signs down for the smoking area. The benches will be gone by the smoking area. Uh, we shouldn't be smoking up by the pumps anyway. We've, I, we've done there job of that. And I'm not trying to harp on you. It, it is what it is. It's a, it, it just is what it is. I've informed you of it. Just that's what it is. I have a question. Yep. Uh, if you have a student, my biggest problem is dipping. Yep. Uh, if you have a student, you first <coughs> have a student start dipping his mouth. Can you ask that to the dog's mouth and let you see it? Yeah, you can. You know they're dipping right above. Well, I mean, you know, I don't know for sure. I'm pretty sure, but I have to see it, you know. I would think I would have to see it. You can. I mean, that's going to put you in a really bad spot if they say screw you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If you know if they're dipping. And if he's dipping, not spitting in the <coughs> Are they going to change the laws for the kids, too, that it's already, okay, let me just tell you this. It's already a law. Kids uh, under 18 are not, not allowed to buy tobacco. They shouldn't even have it. I know. They, they shouldn't have the babies. I mean, you know what? You can ask them. Just use your own discretion on that. But if you uh, if you know they're dipping, or if there's evidence, if they're spitting in your floor in the back, and they're sitting there every day, and you know they're dipping, right above. Yeah. Uh, we'll move their seats. We listen. I'm gonna tell you, the biggest deterrent that we've got is moving their seats, putting them where they don't want to be. And I tell you what, the principals will do. By golly, they'll make them move their seats. 
from the beginning. Now, if they get up and change the seat during the ride, then you ride them up for disobeying. Okay? But the principles have been really good, correct me if I'm wrong, about, about making them move the seats. You put them up there sitting with, with a little kid that's one of your ADHD students. <laughs> they going to straighten up after Robbie. Please, man, let me go back. I don't want to sit by Johnny. He's killing me. He pouring the hair off my arm. So, uh, but they will move them. That's going to be your best return. Uh, yeah, you can ask them. I mean, if they refuse, they refuse. It's about like anything else. Well, I mean, I just wonder if that came under confidentiality, like some of this other stuff. You know, well, I, you know they can make something out of nothing. Oh, yeah, they will. But here's here's, why, here's my best advice, okay? I'm not being smart. Mm -hmm. Problems. You you know, if, you, if you're managing a bus, you know who's dipping on there. I know. Mm -hmm. I know who's dipping, which I've dipped for years. I've been dipping all my life. I know where they hide it. I know where they spit at. But if you're continually walking back there, checking that bus every day, there's pit in the floor, you're going to know who it is. And I'll go even further. Well, I didn't really see them vaping, but I know you know who's vaping on your bus. If you're managing your bus, you're going to know. So just pay attention to stuff. If, if they're back there dipping and you know it, did I see it? No, but I saw the spit where he sits every day. And we do that. And we've been getting some, some leeway with these principles on dealing with the dip. But I tell you, if your bus ain't clean, if your whole bus floor looks like it's been spitting all year, you're not going to be able to tell where they've been spitting at. Okay? And I've seen some that way. They spit down between the seats. They spit down between the seats and the side. Or they'll get real close to They won't sit by the wheel well or the heater. They won't sit by the heater so they can spit in it. Now my, my, my thing is, if they will sit there and spit that heater, when, when I turn it on in the window, they're going to sit there and spill it and burn off. Yeah. All right, so any more questions about that? I used to go in behind the bus going into North High. There was two sitting up in the emergency thing in the back. I'm a couple. I remember. One was standing up. Two more, and they had a cigarette or a joint going around. Smoke was rolling out the window. It was cold. <laughs> that won't happen again. I don't know who for us. Well, I know. That <laughs> won't happen again. <laughs> I believe it's Ronnie. <laughs> All right. Um, who's next? All right, Rob Hale, come on up.